Thank you very much, Joe. And um, yes, indeed, I'd like to explain to you a little bit about uh, standards development and more specifically the opportunities that would arise for you to get involved in smart grid standards development through NSAI. First, uh, a quick word about the National Standards Authority of Ireland. Uh, we are Ireland's uh, national standards body. We've been around for a fair old time now, since uh, uh, 1946. NSCI is the Irish member of a number of uh, international and European organisations, um, most specifically a uh, member of the IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission, CENELEC, the European Committee for Electrotechnical Standardisation, also ISO, CERN and ETSI. Now the latter three I, I won't really have time to deal with uh, this afternoon, so I do want to focus on the IEC, which is the international dimension, and CENELEC, which is the European standards uh, dimension. But just to bring home to you the fact that all of these bodies have some degree of involvement in smart grids, so there are the, there's work going on within all of those bodies. Um, it, it's important to emphasize that NSA is not a, a smart grids uh, agency or anything like that. We uh, are here to provide a gateway for stakeholders, all manner of stakeholders, industry, consumers, etc. Uh, stakeholder participation in global standards development. So we really uh, act as a broker to introduce you to the world of standards. Uh, both uh, worldwide and European. Uh, of course, we publish uh, well-known uh, Irish standards, uh, which are voluntary documents. Sometimes people don't really appreciate that these are voluntary standards. They're not SIs, they're not statutory instruments or laws. They are purely voluntary in nature. Uh, and a very important point is that we are obliged to publish um, and adopt European standards developed by the CENELEC in the electrotechnical area as Irish standards, in other words, as ISDNs. If you go to the online catalogue at www.standards.ie, you'll see just how many of our standards now are based on Irish, uh, on European standards. And of course, this trend is, is gathering pace, and there are fewer and fewer indigenous uh, projects or national projects. This is all part of the completion of the internal European market. So more and more Irish standards are uh, based on European standards. Now, turning to the first of the uh, standards bodies that I mentioned, the International Electrotechnical Commission. Uh, it's been around a fair old while. It's been developing uh, voluntary electrotechnical standards since uh, 1906, since the days of Kelvin. And indeed, here he is himself, uh, Belfast-born William Thompson, Lord Kelvin who was the first president of the IEC. Uh, but he was president also of the uh, West of Scotland Unionist uh, Association as well. So I think he would have really enjoyed himself this week. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the IEC has uh, thrived over the years and um, it now comprises some 60 member countries, 23 associate members. and. Uh, at a technical level, we have within IEC something of the order of 174, it's changing all the time, 174 technical committees covering all areas of electrotechnology and subcommittees, 493 working groups, 559 maintenance teams, which are charged with maintaining standards, and 13,560 IEC experts. And if you think that's bad, uh, it only gets worse when you look at the uh, ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, which is huge. So you can imagine, and that, those are only two organizations in five uh, international organizations that we're a member of. So you can imagine what a handful of people in NSCI, uh, what a task we have in trying to deal with this. Now, the most important thing you have to bear in mind is that IEC standards are the basis for many CENELEC European standards. So while IEC standards, worldwide standards, are purely voluntary in nature, they have a very real significance for us here in Europe because they form the basis for um, European standards. So um, ENs, absolutely vital because we're obliged to publish them as higher standards. 
well, so many, about 75% of um, ENs are based on IEC standards. In fact, the ideal situation would be if, if Senelec is doing virtually nothing and all the work is being progressed on, on, on a worldwide basis, uh, which is a tremendous uh, asset for a business trying to contend with standards across the world. Now, standards development in IEC is a consensus-based approach. It's a formula that we've used way back since the, uh, 1906, covering, as I said, all areas of electrotechnology. Smart grids are only a small part of the picture, and also including things like conformity assessment schemes. There's some time to go into that today, but you may have come across some of those conformity <laughs> assessment schemes, such as the well-known IECEX scheme for potentially exposed atmospheres. And more recently, they've launched a new conformity as assessment scheme for renewable energies that's really only come off the ground very recently. IEC standards um, are developed via, trans via a transparent, open, and consensual uh, process. And they're open to you, you know. Um, so often, when people come to me with queries on IEC standards, they don't actually appreciate that really the answers to many of the questions they're asking, but they're all on the web. IEC is very open about uh, its work, and things are really only a, a click away, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit how you can explore that in a moment. Um, it can get very complicated, and uh, to try and simplify it, just be aware that uh, standards in IEC are developed through a series of stages. Um, NP, New Work Item Proposal, a Working Draft, a Committee Draft, a Draft International Standard, a Final Draft International Standard, and then finally an International Standard. But the real document I think you need to look out for there is the Committee Draft. A committee Draft is a document which is open for comment uh, on a worldwide basis. Every country has an opportunity to, to make its contribution, including Ireland. So these are really important documents, Committee Drafts, because that's really the point at which uh, you will have the opportunity to make uh, inputs or at least see what's happening uh, in, in terms of standards development maybe a year or two before the final document is published. Interesting thing about the IEC is that it works on the basis of one country, one vote. So Ireland has the same vote as China, America, etc. That's um, not the case in the Senelec, in the European area where it's a weighted voting system, so I think Ireland has about seven votes, and Germany has something of the order, I think 29, and Scotland has, I'm not sure, you'll have to see. <laughs> now, um, I see very much involved in smart grids, and to make life very easy, they have a, um, uh, a smart grid standards map on the website, so they've actually done all the work for me, and it's only a matter of going onto the website and following up on the Smart Grid Standards map, and it's all laid out for you there. And you can see all the standards that are currently uh, developed or under development. And it presents it in a nice graphical way uh, in terms of an architectural view or a mapping view of the IEC standards of the website. Maybe a little bit flaky at times, but the architectural view seems to work very nicely for me, and it sets out in very clear terms, the totality of the IC standards work underway. And I can recommend no better way than to go to the smart grids mapping tool to get a real overview as to what's going on in the world of standards. Now, uh, through the uh, smart grids uh, uh, mapping tool, you'll be able to find your way to technical committees, which will be particular to your interests. You do have to make that, that uh, step. Identify the committee that would be of interest to you, for example, IEC TC57 or whatever, or TC8. And when you've done that, you can find your way, again, it's, it's, it's readily available on, it, on the home page of the IEC website, find your way to the committee dashboards. And here, everything is laid out before you. There's nothing there that is hidden. The, the whole picture is available for everybody to see in terms of the standards progressing through those stages that I mentioned. That was a lot of more dates and things like that. But the idea is, is really quite simple. Everything is there and this is, the, this is a stopping point for people, whether you just have a, a, 
casual interest or whether you're a professional standardizer, the IEC committee dashboards has got to be the place to go. It has detailed information on all those 174 IEC committees and it's being updated literally every single day. It includes things like structure of the committee, projects underway, publications issued, working drafts, votes, meetings, etc. It's, it's all there. The only annoying thing is that when you actually try and get a document, it's password protected. Um, and that's something that we deal with in NSCI. We hold passwords for Ireland. But don't never fear, if you, if you are interested in these documents, uh, you can always come to us in NSCI. In the fullness of time, we are hoping to get those committee drafts, which I pointed out were such important documents, getting them up on the web site, uh, the, the online commenting tool that we use called Your Standards, Your Say. So uh, there's a, there are some technical problems, but we are working towards a, a situation where those committee drafts, those all important committee drafts, will be up on you. NSEI, Your Standards, Your Say, and you'll be able to make your input there and have a look at the documents. Now, turning to the European body, CENELEC, um, the European Committee for Electrotechnical Standardization. It, as I said, whenever possible, adopts IEC standards as European standards. Uh, and is a member of CENELEC, and as I mentioned to you, this is the form in which things work on a weighted basis. Now, the importance of CENELEC is that it accepts mandates from uh, the European uh, Commission relating to standardization. And some of the, mand the mandates uh, relate to smart grids and smart metering and things like that. So CENELEC works much more closely with the Commission. So the work of CENELEC has profound implications for us um, because, as I say, we have to sweep aside any national standards and implement the, the work of CENELEC. But happily, it is based on the work 75% of the cases based on the work of the IEC. So um, it does make for a simpler understanding of the relationship there. Now, ooh, right. uh, now CENELEC has uh, various technical committees, but it also has a smart grid coordination group. And that's a high level organization which has produced reports and things like that uh, relating to smart grid standardization specifically in uh, Europe. So if you were looking at CENELEC, I would suggest you have a look at some of those reports on the, on the Smart Grids Coordination Group, which will put everything in context. Now, the final body I have to introduce you to is a national body. It's the uh, uh, Committee of the Electrotechnical Council of Ireland, Technical Committee Number 20. ETCI has many committees, but uh, TC20 has uh, the role of coordinating Ireland's input on uh, smart grids to IEC and CENELEC. It also deals with uh, electric vehicles and um, wind turbines. It's, it's a consultative committee, and the great thing is it doesn't produce, uh, produce any white papers, policies, reports, or anything like that. Its focus is very much on the Irish input to the IEC and the CENELEC. So, participation opportunities. Well, the first thing is, if you're really serious about more information, your first protocol really should be the IEC and the CENELEC website. As I said, that's where everybody goes, whether you're doing this as a, you know, your day-to-day -day job or whether you just want to peruse the thing. IEC CENELEC website's the first starting point. Then, if you're more interested in particular technical committees, and you, you found your, the committee is of interest to you, those IEC and CENELEC uh, dashboards give you picture, a detailed picture, on a day-to-day -day basis as to where the work stands. The IC Smart Grid Mapping Tool has got to be an essential uh, protocol for you as well. Drafts for comment via NSAI, as I said, you could request them from us at this stage and hopefully in the fullness of time, and not too long time, we'll get those up on our website and you'll be able to download them and comment on them. Technical committee number 20, uh, I think, can accept more members. We, we have quite a full committee, but um, people with a real interest, I think, can still be accommodated. And, of course, at the, the very apex of the, of the triangle, if you like, would be the idea of joining an IEC or a Senate uh, committee and uh, being a part of the group of people 
with jet all over the world and write these standards. And it can be a problem, of course, for people because IEC is worldwide and you never know where the meeting is going to be. It does require real commitment, but people are doing it and participating very actively in some areas. CENELEC Smart Grids Coordination Group, also worth 